Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today we have one of our podcast experts on the show again. She is in our community. She has her own podcast, and it's Debbie Adams, and she is a published author, and today she wants to talk about resilience rising. She wants to talk about how to navigate through life storms, and today she has some great advice, and she has some really great knowledge to share. So I'm going to give the stage to Debbie and let Debbie talk about how to actually navigate through life storms. Thank you, Stacy. So glad to be back again. <clears throat> As you mentioned, I am an author, and I've only became an author um, about three years ago. And the way I became an author isn't because it's something that I wanted to do, even though as a child, <clears throat> I, you know, grew up reading books. I would write, you know, little short stories, whatever. But my my being an author is a calling. And some people might not see it as a calling. They might just say, oh, I love to write. I love to help other people, which I do. I love to help people, too. But <clears throat> when you have a story, like I have a story, like you've heard before, my can cancer survivor's story. Yes. And God spoke to me and told me that I need to share my story. I need to share my testimony through writing books. And I need to let others know not only about me, but about him. And how no matter what we're going through in life, as long as we turn to God, God is there yes. and God will help us. Oh, and yeah. I've been, you've heard and your audience has heard, I've been through a lot of life experiences. I mean, some bad, some good. Exactly. And, <clears throat> and God has always been there. And yeah. a lot of times, you know, we will be going through stuff. You know, like somebody might be wanting to foreclose on your house. You might be going through a medical issue. And right. what do we automatically do? We automatically get on the phone. Oh, let's call. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yes. And, but we need to look up, look up to God. We need to call out to God and ask him. You know, what is your plan? What show me what I need to do? Right. And so that is my whole purpose behind writing um, books. And you can see my books behind me. Yes. And um, the first book that I wrote, um, God placed on my heart. And um, if I can put it right there, it's unlocking the code to bliss. Mm -hmm. And God wanted me to let people know how to live a healthy lifestyle. Yes. And in this book, I get it. It, it is sort of funny points in this book because I, me living in the South, I talk about everybody's heard of the Southern bells, you know, <laughs> and gone with the wind. So I do put a little bit of humor in this book, but, um, Back when I first started writing and I wrote this book, I my life wasn't, my lifestyle wasn't that healthy. You know, you eat whatever you want to eat, you know, don't worry about it. And <clears throat> that was right after um, COVID. And, you know, with COVID, we all stayed home. We all ate, gained weight, didn't yep. exercise. <laughs> and <laughs> let's not, let's not ever do that again. And um, <clears throat> so um, I wanted, as, as well as giving my testimony, I wanted to help people to see how they can have a healthy lifestyle. I mean, yeah. just, it's not really going on a diet because, you know, everybody knows you go on a diet and, you know, for a month, oh, I've lost so many pounds. And then the next month you gain it all back because you go back to eating, you know, and yes. <clears throat> it's not really what you eat. It's how you are eating as far as your body composition, because yes. 
everybody's body is different. Everybody's body um, reacts to different foods, different activities, different. Exactly. And so in in this book, so we're over here, and okay. in in the, in this book, um, I talk about you know just getting out in in the sunshine, getting your vitamin vitamin C, um, you know, walking around, and you don't even have. I walk around the block, you know, to get exercise. It's about a mile around our block, and but you don't even have to do that. You can you know just walk around in your yard, you know, just go sit under your favorite tree in the yard, read a good book just get sunshine it will help your hair to yes. be more healthy it will yes. help the pigments in your hair and when i started writing this book i did a lot of research as i was writing it and you know i researched you know our bones our muscles our tendons our hair particles you know just our, our eyes just everything and they say that your eyes are or a um guidepost to your soul. I can't yeah. yeah, I can't remember the actual saying, but um but you you get what I'm talking about. And so um you know whatever is inside of you, just like I talk about in that my current book, Straighten Your Crown, you know, yes. whatever is inside of you will come out in your actions and you know things you say and yes. so if we are eating right if we are doing right um as far as letting god lead us as to how you know we're supposed to be living our lives yes. then we're going to have more energy and you mentioned this morning that i seemed energy energized um but um We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but why? But um, yeah, the healthy lifestyle, it, and it's, I talk a lot about your gut, how stuff that you eat will go to your gut and it will mess you up. And, you know, we've all heard the phrase, you know, we need a clean gut. And I talk, you know, I talk about that. And so, you know, anybody that wants to, you know, find out, in detail what exactly i did right you know they can get that book um right. but the fast forward to this year i found out about carnivore and people call it a diet but mm -hmm. it's not a diet to me it is a lifestyle it yes. is the same thing as this book where was that over here um <laughs> i forget which side i'm on um and it's a it's a healthy lifestyle it is because you know it's only eating um animal based food but people right. might think oh i can't just eat steak all the day all the time but it's not just steak you know it's any kind of meat and um eggs you know they come from an animal they come from a chicken so wow. you know like for breakfast this morning i had eggs and bacon and you know that they say you know you need your vegetables like my mom she always says and she's still saying it while I'm when I'm on carnivore she's like you need to eat your vegetables you know they give you all the nutrients but I researched the carnivore just like I researched for this book the first yeah. book that I wrote and God created our bodies in such a way that when we eat all of this animal based food it puts all the nutrients and proteins and fat in our body that we need and through I, this is my third month on carnivore and um, my friend Michelle Moore Winder that's on Facebook you know I've talked about her before and um, that I went to California to learn how to read a, write a book and she started it five months ago. And then when she started talking about it, I got curious. So I did a little bit of research. And yeah. um, so, you know, our body, when we're putting bad stuff in our bodies, we 
our our body is you know having our bodies will hold it like fat because it doesn't know what it is but then when we start eating right and we have the good fat in our bodies then our bodies will kick that out as waste you know it's like oh we don't need that anymore because we've got enough fat and proteins in our bodies so you know that's what um I'm talking about when I'm saying live a healthy lifestyle and the carnivore is a healthy lifestyle. Not yeah. that I don't still, you know, eat ice cream occasionally. You know, my husband will give me when he's eating ice cream, you know, give me a spoonful of chocolate ice cream or like last night I did eat a chocolate chip cookie. But, you know, overall, it, you know, eating the right stuff is helping our bodies to perform the way Mm -hmm. God created them. Oh, yeah. And even, you know, even in in God's word, he talks about all of the animals that we should eat or shouldn't eat. Right. And, you know, he, you know, I can't remember all the ones that, you know, we can't eat, but, you know, like the, the cows and the, uh, pigs to where the pork and the bacon and all that stuff comes from and so my point to all of this is that no matter if you're doing carnivore like I am or whatever you're eating do it in such a way that your lifestyle will be so healthy that people will notice you yeah. and listen to God God will tell you how you need to live your life if -hmm. you're wanting to lose lose weight which i did need a few pounds gone you know (laughs) you know you can eat you know carnivore or whatever you want whichever you know direction you want to go it doesn't necessarily have to be carnivore but whichever direction you want to go and god will lead you into that and because i prayed about that you know i started researching it and is like okay is this something I need to do because I was you know I'm I work a 40-hour job you know I write books I deal with family issues and you know we all stay busy and so I was running out of energy and I would get up wake up tired go to work go to bed tired you know I was tired all the time and but when you're putting the right stuff in your bodies, when your bodies are, are finding that you have the good stuff in your bodies, then you're going to have energy. And I even got my hair highlighted, um, I guess about um, maybe a month ago. And that's when I was, I was doing carnival for two months and I had so many compliments on my hair and it's the same color I've always had. Right. And they were talking about, oh, your hair is so healthy looking. What are you doing? And I'm like, um, nothing <laughs> other than carnivore, <laughs> you know, I'm eating right. So, you know, that is, um, it, you know, if we follow God and listen to him and ever I mean not that I there have you know we all have times you know where we want to go our own way we want to do our own thing I've done I've I've been there I've done that and um but when God speaks to us what are we doing are we listening or are we going our own way yeah and if I hadn't listen when he told me to write these books back here I mean where would I have been now and I know my books are helping people because I've had people you know tell me I've read your book and I really needed that I had one of my friends I had no idea she was going through anything and I think it was my second book Divine Promises and she said I'm going through such and such and that really helped me to focus on what God wants me to do right now right and that touched my heart and I realized 
that's why God wants me to be an author, write books. He wants me because I've always loved to help people, even as a child. And and I thought that is the perfect way for me to help other people yeah. and do what God wants me to do is by writing books. And <clears throat> any of my books that I write, I always pray about what words he wants me to put in the books, how I need to you know, talk about certain subjects in the book. Right. And so, um, you know, anybody that is going through anything, I mean, maybe, maybe God is talking to you, wanting you to go a different direction in your life. You know, like this was definitely a different direction in my life. Yeah. And, you know, when he first, when God first told me I needed to write a book, I I've told him to, told this story before, but I'll bring it back up. Yeah. When he told me to write a book, I and you know, and I told him I I talked to him back and forth for I know at least a couple of weeks, and I was like, "How in the world am I going to write a book? I have no idea what to what to do. I mean, I I I know how to write, of course, but to put it in a book format." you know, yeah. make chapters. I mean, I have no idea. So he sent me, he connected me with my friend, Michelle Moore Winter, yeah. and sent me all the way to California to her retreat and to show me how to write a book. Right. And, you know, if you, if you ask God to, show you how to do something if you feel like maybe maybe god's saying you need to open your own business with you know whatever is in your heart that you love to do mm -hmm. and you know you don't know how i mean just ask god you know open a door um put people in my life you know to lead and guide me in how to do this he will do that right and then you know when i came home from the retreat and then I wrote the first book and then I thought, okay, you know, I've done, you know, what God wanted me to do. And then God said, no, um, that's just part of the plan. He says, yeah. I want you, I want, I want this to be a new direction in your life. I want this to be added to what you're already doing in your life, you know, because I have a full-time job and, you know, anybody that works 40 hours, they know, yeah. you know, you stay busy. And then you have, you know, other family things to take care of, too. And so, you know, he he told me, you know, I want you to keep writing. I want you to be the new author on the block, so to speak. Yeah. And, and so, you know, that's where, you know, my second book, Divine Promises, that's where my majority of my testimony is because I talk more about all of my life experiences that I went through and how God has helped me. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and then I wrote, um, back in February, my straighten your crown talking, you know, about your heart, how to keep your heart pure. And, and I will, I haven't got anything going as far as a new book right now, but it's, it's coming. It, I just, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to <clears throat> get things done this summer, but it's coming. And so, um, you know, whatever God is talking to you about, we need to listen to God. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, like I talked about, you know, they will, try to figure it out on their own. They will talk to their friends, but God is always there. I mean, God created us in his image. Yes. And like I talk about in my divine promises book, <clears throat> my favorite promise is the one where God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. So, you know, you might say, Oh, um, got, stage four cancer i'm gonna die you know whatever but i have seen god turn cancer around um, uh 
my mom had cancer three times and she had stage three cancer. Um, and uh, she had to take a lot of lip nodes out of her body right. and God turned that around. I mean, right now, you know, she's, she's doing fine and she is 85 years old. So yes. I am a strong believer in turning to God, praying to God, you yeah. know, obeying God, listening to what God wants you to do. Right. So, um, I mean, that, that's my main message today. And, you know, also if you don't know God, yeah, if, you know, if you haven't asked him to come into your heart, I mean, he's still there. Yeah. I mean, it's not that you can't pray to him and he will help you because even though you might not be his child right now, you yeah. can still pray to him and then whatever you're going through. And yeah. then you, you will come to the point where you will ask Jesus to come into your heart yeah. and, you know, so you can live for eternity in heaven. But, um, you know, no matter if you're trying to decide if you need to do something new, go on a new adventure, I call it a leap of faith. Yeah. Because, because you, it's, it really is a leap of faith when you start something new. Yes. Not to say that this author, um, challenge that I went on, wasn't scary it was very scary to me mm -hmm. and when I got that first book published and I thought oh people are gonna laugh at me they're not gonna read my book they're not even gonna like my books you know but <laughs> but I had to get you know that I think that was a the devil getting trying to get in my head and you know you as long as we follow God as long as we do what God's plan is for our life. Yeah. And if you don't know what God's plan is, ask him and he will de definitely show you. Yes. And, you know, he will open doors, you know, that only he can open and, you know, you can go through them and you will be amazed. I mean, I'm amazed at what's happened in my life over the past three years. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, you will definitely be amazed at how your life can change for the better. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I agree with you. I had someone just recently come on the show and they changed their their name and their focus because they just got a calling in their heart that said, you've got to do this. And they just went with it because they know it was from a higher power that was mm -hmm. talking. And so they just, they, they changed everything around and they did things differently and it's, it's turned out wonderfully, but you know, you got to listen, you know, to, mm -hmm. to heart and to what your, you know, the, your voice, the calling mm -hmm. of God is saying to you and really take it in because, you know, I always believe, you know, they're always giving us direction. We just have to be open-minded and we have to just listen, you know, and we're always getting signs. And the fact that you talked about health is great too, because you can't, you know, in, in order to be open and to listen and to be, and to, you really have to be, you know, everything, your mind, your body, your, your spirit, everything has to be intact with each other. And, you know, eating healthy is a big part of it. I think, I don't think a, a lot of Americans realize how important health is, the foods we put in our body, the the impact it has on the way we think, on the way we feel, on, the, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, like everything's connected. So I think it interferes with our, our spiritual connection. If we're not feeling good, we can't focus. We don't have that clarity. Mm -hmm. we want everything to be working in sync with each other, you know, and I always say, stay away from those processed foods, stay away from all those foods with all the bad ingredients in it, you know, mm -hmm. actually, you know, and, you know, and you have to just, you know, think of yourself as a trophy that you're going to put on a shelf and you're <laughs> going to take that trophy, you know, mm -hmm. and you are, trophy. and before you can take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. You have to give yourself self love and self care. And so you really, 
when you're eating properly, when you're, you know, taking time to connect with, you know, whoever, you know, your God, your whoever, you know, people believe in, you know, they have to connect, they have to believe, and they have to, you know, be in sync. Everything is mm -hmm. in sync. Is when you're taking care of yourself, you know, physically, mentally, you feel better. Take time out for prayer. Take time out and and listen for the responses. Because I always believe, you know, when you pray and when you call out and you you ask for things, now they're going to answer. But you gotta you gotta look around and the signs are there. Mm -hmm. and you gotta find those signs. Whether that it's going to be come from your heart and you just gonna, it's going to come to your mind, or whether you're going to see a little symbol. You know, they mm -hmm. was a pastor who talked about you know the symbolisms you know when you pray sometimes you look around and you see little symbols you know and those mm -hmm. are the answers or they're leading you to the answer you have to just be open listen take care of yourself you know it, it all it all works in one big circle you know and that's why your hair is so beautiful because you do all <laughs> those things, you know and it's so important that people really you know stop worrying about everything else and take time to worry about yourself first. It's really important. That That is it. Exactly. That's it in a nutshell. And getting back to what you said about the symbol, the symbolism. I mean, I have been praying before, you know, for something that maybe I wanted to do. Or maybe something that I thought God was speaking to my heart about. And I've had people, maybe somebody that I already knew, just out of the blue, say something. They did not know what I had been praying about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was God using them to say, hey, yes, this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. So we have to look for that symbolism as well as yeah. listen to God. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I I feel that is, is so true. Now you're working on a book now that's going to be coming out soon. Tell me a little about that. I, I'm not actually writing anything right now, but I do have um, three ideas in my head and I'm praying, I'm praying um, to God as to which direction I need to go. Um, there's still got to be, you know, faith books. Mm -hmm. um, one of them I want to go in more detail, you know, about my cancer. So I want to write a book about cancer and, you know, how I felt going through that and how God showed up in that to help me. I and yes, and that's probably the direction I will end up going because I feel like that's where God is leading me um, because so many people have gotten cancer um, since I had it 15 years ago. I mean, mine was, mine was nothing. Mine was only, well, I can say it was nothing, but it was only stage one. And, you know, other people that I've seen people that I know have had worst time going through it than I did like my mother went through um cancer three times and mine was slow growing and hers you know is fast and I mean she right now she's still on a chemo pill mm -hmm. and um but you know she has to come off of that in April so you know God's I know God's gonna take care of that and um but and then I've had, you know, people pass away in my family that had cancer. And, you know, right now my uncle, he's dealing with blood cancer. So, you know, he's 88. Yeah. And, you know, my faith still remains in God. Because when you have cancer and, you know, if you, if you know you're going to heaven, if you leave this earth, then you're going to heaven, you're cured of that cancer. Or if you stay on the earth and God cures you of the cancer, I mean, you're good either way, yeah. the way I look at it. And um, so, yes, that that will probably be my next book. And I have, you know, I have two other ideas that I'm going around in my head. I'm always got ideas about books in my head. 
<laughs> but it, yeah, it. I don't have a definite date on when that will come out, um, but probably toward the end of the year or first of next year. Um, Cause I've had a lot of um, family, you know, health issues going on that I've had to, you know, take care of. And so that's kind of on the back burner, but I'm still, you know, floating ideas around in my head. That's wonderful. And tell everybody a little bit about some of the books that you've written already and tell them, tell them what it's about. Okay. My, I've already talked about the, um, unlocking the code to bliss, <clears throat> you know, that's about living the healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. and my divine promises is my second book. Um, and it is about, I write about 10 promises of God and I relate that to, um, 10 of my life experiences and um, one of them, what the main one was my cancer um, battle that I went through in, you know, 15 years. No, I think it's 16 years in November this year, um, mm -hmm. cancer free. And I went through a tornado. Yay. I went through a tornado that was sitting on top of my house and God's hand moved it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just I just talk about life experiences that me or anyone would go through right. um, and how God took care of me. And, yeah. you know, I talk about how he will take care of, you know, anybody else that's going through whatever their life experiences are. Yes. And then my current book that came out in February is Straighten Your Crown. And it talks about the crown on your heart. And yeah like I talked about earlier, whatever is in your heart, whether it's a bad attitude, um, you know, resentment, whatever, we need to keep our heart pure, keep put pure things in our heart. So whatever will come out in our speaking or our actions, you yes. know, will always be pure and honorable to the one King, you know, um, Lord Jesus Christ. And yeah, that that's the three books, and the fourth one is on the way soon. <laughs> that's wonderful. And if you had to take today's um um message that we shared, you know, well, actually you shared, you know, what are some of the things that you would like to, people to like you like to emphasize that you the message you want to get across to others? Whatever you're going through, don't rely on men women the human race don't rely on on the us rely on god your yeah. first impulse whether you know god or not call out to him when you're going through something yes. that you know whether a medical issue or financial issue whatever you're going through call call out to god first and ask him, you know, to help you. Ask him to lead you, give you direction in your life. That would be my main, main message for people. I love it. I love it. And then where can people find your books? My books are on every online bookstore, um, including Amazon. And um, they're on Amazon, Books A Million, um, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart. They're mm -hmm. also in chapters in Canada for people mm -hmm. that, you know, live in Canada. And um, you can also um, go to my website and there's a, a link on there. You can click on the link and it will take you directly to Amazon to buy my book. And my website is debbieadamsbooks.biz, B-I-Z. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. You know, you always come on with a beautiful message and I truly, you know, admire you and everything you, you have done, you know, you've been through so much in life and you have overcome everything. And you have, like we said earlier on, you know, rising above resilience, you've done it. You know, you are a strong woman who has overcome, you know, a lot in life and you've navigated through the storms in life 
and you have succeeded, you know, and you now you're a published author and you're sharing your messages and you're sharing your stories with others and helping so many people out there. So I, you know, kudos to you and thank you for everything you do. And I look forward to more messages from you. I'm really, you know, you are truly an inspiration to me and I know you're an inspiration to many others. So thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you, Stacy. I've enjoyed all of these um, podcasts and messages that we've, we've done over the several months. Yes, definitely. Well, you know what? You have a wonderful day and thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. You too.